Intergraph understands that the need for emergency response is greater than ever, especially as tough economic times challenge agencies to stretch limited resources. In light of these demands, it is increasingly important to accelerate emergency response with the most efficient and easy-to-use computer-aided dispatch system available. Intergraph's computer-aided dispatch facilitates communication by providing split-second decision-making capabilities for faster emergency response that saves lives and protects property. In today's session, we'll introduce you to Intergraph's computer-aided dispatch, or CAD, application. You'll discover the flexibility of the system and learn how Intergraph's CAD provides call center and communication center operators with the tools they need to field calls, create and update incident details, and manage an organization's critical resources from a single interface. Intergraph's CAD ensures the right information is available for making urgent decisions. Let's begin by talking about what you see on these two screens. First, you can see the call entry area in the upper left corner. As we create event entries, they come down into a queue here. Over on the right screen, you can see the unit status monitor where we'll update the statuses of individual units. Then further on the right screen, you see the map. The map display we're looking at today is from Louisville, Kentucky, Jefferson County, which is one of our customers. So we have a full data set to work from. I want you to notice two things in particular about our CAD application. It's both flexible and map-centric. First, there's flexibility built into everything you see. The word description on the menu, size of the buttons, and what the buttons actually say are all configurable, so you can set them up to match your agency's unique workflows. There's also flexibility in how we enter information into the system. We can do it via keyboard, mouse, drag and drop, so we support multiple workflows, which makes it very simple to move from your current legacy system to the Intergraph CAD system. Now, let's focus on the map-centric nature, or map intelligence, of our application. We'll be highlighting that in the second screen here. Throughout the demonstration, you'll see that there are different levels of detail, all the way down to the building floor plans and fire hydrants in the map, that we can pull up information from. Let's begin by taking an Annie Alley call. As soon as that call comes into CAD, it populates the system and immediately zooms into that location on the map. There are two critical pieces of information here, location and the type of call. In this case, the call type is a TIN code to support police, fire, or EMS. This generates a new call into the queue, which is time-stamped down here in the pending queue, showing when it was first entered and coloring it according to priority. The next thing we're going to do is actually send units to the call. We can do that in a variety of ways. First, we'll just use the command line, so let's talk a little about that. We'll use the command line to send Unit 117 to the event. When we do that, it highlights in the system that Unit 117 has been dispatched. You'll notice that on our unit's task monitor, the color of Unit 117 has changed to show it's in a dispatch mode now to that event of that type for that location. So as I go through this exercise, I can constantly see feed updates and information. If the officer radios in and says he's headed to the scene, then we're going to change him to en route. And as you can see, he's changed to green. Now I can go ahead and show that he's arrived on the scene and the unit displays red in our CAD system to illustrate that. Now we want to clear that unit off the call. I'll use the command line up at the top and clear it with multiple dispositions. Various things may have occurred, such as an arrest. So the system generates the records number, which is the case number tied to your police record system. In this case, it's a police call. This is the same technique that we'd use for fire and EMS workflows. Let's talk a little bit more about that Annie Alley call and what happens as the information comes through. The system is very powerful in helping as we enter location data. So, for example, to locate McDonald's, if I typed in MCD, the system shows me all the various McDonald's in the area. I'm then able to display all of them on the CAD map and determine which McDonald's I'm actually at. This is important because many times the caller is from out of town, so they don't necessarily know the street they're on, but they know they're at McDonald's. So you can quickly narrow it down and say this is the McDonald's they're at, so we want to send the unit to that location. 
Notice the system tracks the address, so we route the unit to the right place. Again, we're going to create an incident there for now. We'll say there was a hit and run accident there. This will generate a police and EMS respond request there. And again, we can accept that into the system as a new event. Now we can add information along with the comments, such as car off the road looks like it's on fire. Everything is being kept as a chronology of this call, as I mentioned. So there's a full time-stamped record of everything that's happened since the call was first created, including who put in the comments and when they were typed in for reporting purposes. But also there's supplemental information that's linked to databases that can tell us what type of vehicle is involved, the vehicle tag information, and so on. So it's linked to your NCIC in your local state. Let's go ahead and add that information about the vehicle. In this case, we're going to add the tag information. When we do that, the system runs a check on that tag against the local records management system to see if information is available about that vehicle. In this case, it tells us some information about the owner of that vehicle, as well as if there's anything out on the NCIC track about that vehicle. So that information is all linked, and it can be brought right back into that CAD event very quickly and easily. Another thing we can do is supply information about people involved in the event. Let's go ahead and dispatch a couple of units to this scene. 112B, for example, and 120. Let's say 112B arrived on the scene and radioed in, saying it looks like we have a suspicious person lingering by the car. So, of course, we want to run a check on him. So we can go ahead and do that, and using a similar technique to entering vehicle information, just add that name to the call through the command line or by filling out a form, as I'm doing now. The operator can choose whichever method he or she prefers. In this case, we got a hit detection back and it shows the suspicious person's information. Additionally, we'll go to NCIC and it will show photographs of that individual and that data is pulled across the network. It links to external databases, passing information in and out of the CAD system. Along with that, our interoperability framework allows us to broadcast information onto a backbone network, such as Microsoft BizTalk, and create things such as an Amber Alert, which displays not only on other CAD systems, but also on highway signs, or wherever the XML display needs to be. So as you can see, we can interface with third-party databases very easily. Let's talk a little more about interoperability. Let's say there was a cell phone call we took in and there's some information tied to it. Let's go ahead then and look at the ability to create multi-agency situations. But before I do that, I want to go ahead and take another call into the system using an Annie Alley. And in this case, I'm entering a fire rescue incident. That's going to actually create in the system a fire and EMS response. So down in our queue now, we're going to see that there are actually two responses. So we've created a multi-agency response. Typically, the call taker would accept the call, and the EMS dispatcher would get the EMS call, or the fire dispatcher would get the fire call. Since I'm sitting on one workstation today, I'm putting everything into one queue, kind of like a supervisor. The system auto-routes those calls to the responsible party and the responsible dispatchers. Now I can actually recommend units based on the type of event that's going on out there. I can choose different ways to do that. In this case, I'm going to send some EMS units, so let's just grab a whole set of them. So notice I'm creating all of these, and I can just use my function keys and dispatch that whole set of ambulances just that quickly. So I'm going to show you a very easy way of updating information without having to manually key in each unit. That's the versatility of the CAD system. Let's look at when that map is displayed, where that call came in. If I go to that unit at any time, I can also just type a unit, and the system will center on that unit on the map. Okay, I'm able to see where that unit is now. Another advantage of this system is the ability to use consumer maps. So I can actually use a Google map with this and not just be limited to the map you're seeing here. And what that will allow me to do is have another window display. 
As you can see, things that are happening on the CAD map are displayed on the Google map as well. So as I move the map, here we have two screens, but a lot of the time CAD is set up on three. The Google map will follow the exact same location areas on the map. So I'm able to work within the CAD map and then also see within the Google experience the aerial photography right next to it side by side. Here's an example of a school and of course you have the zoom in tools from Google and the ability to come into that unit and see that school up close so you have a little bit more detail. This is important if you're sending your units outside their normal response zone area or into areas that may not be covered in your map. This capability is also available on our mobile units. Now let's talk about display. You'll notice that the columns and the way that they're displayed are also very flexible. You can just pick up the location field, move it back and forth, and put event type in front of time, all to match your workflow. You can do that same thing over in the unit monitor. We can match the units and their locations and times based on the way that you like to work. The way that displays is set up in a different technique. So here's another example of using that monitor to see that there's an event. And these are all the units assigned to that event. It's very helpful when you're doing something such as staging for a fire or even an EMS big event where we might actually have the unit staging at different locations. So we're going to stage this unit at the Kroger parking lot and send that in. So we're able to actually see those different locations put into place. Again, menus like this match a little bit more some of the older techniques or some of the legacy systems out there where they're used to having their events and units all in one window versus what we had here earlier, an event window, and then over here, a unit window specific to units. As you can see, we have many different ways of displaying the information to match more closely what the operator was using in the agency's legacy system. Now let's look at some information here. I'm going to clear this one out. And also, we use this common name. Let's go to the location here, this Hamilton building, for example. You'll notice that pre-filled out information comes up right away. There are a couple of things that lit up. The special situation button lit up, and so did the event history. So here I can see special information, such as whether there's a pre-plan for the building. Are there standard operating procedures? Is there a Word document so SOPs can be linked directly to this location? Is there hazardous material on file? And is there a pre-plan of the building? Here's an example of the building. All types of information and intelligence can be added to that map. And it lets us know that there's data there. But if I also zoom in on the map itself, I can see that the data is there. I get a symbol right on the map if there's hazardous material, or if there are other alerts indicating what the special situations are. Again, this is very important if you dispatch to a fire and it's two doors down from a gas station or if there are hazardous materials at the scene. You're going to know that before the units arrive. Intergraph CAD gives you the tools you need to receive calls, create and update incident details, and manage your critical resources in real time from a single interface. When you combine that with the software's search capabilities and support for consumer maps, you have everything you need to respond quickly to incidents of all kinds, even those involving multiple agencies. For more information about Intergraph's incident management solution, visit the link posted at the bottom of your screen.